All right, we're going to look at this uh, Garmin Nuvi 30. This is the last 3.5-inch GPS made by Garmin, uh, automotive unit at least. Uh, the first thing I'll tell you is that if you do want to get one of these, make very sure you get this clip because I do believe it is only made for this specific unit and um, you would think that the uh, 4.3 inch clip would work it might but I'm pretty sure this is proprietary to the uh, Nuvi 30 so make sure if you get one definitely get that uh, the people who would be interested in this would mainly be I mean you could use it in the car or truck but probably the people most interested in this one are bicyclists and motorcyclists eh, I don't know if you should really go for this one yeah it's cheap uh, yes you can put in a memory card which will if I can get it to focus there I have an 8 gigabyte card in there it'll support up to 32 gigabyte and on this one in particular I did go ahead and load up the uh, open map chest, which is open street map. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, because it's probably true when you get one of these, I mean, there is such a thing as the 30 LM. This is not an LM. I mean, yeah, I did put uh, modern maps into this from Garmin in a not so honest way. I can't tell you how I did that, but you can do this completely free and legal and I'll have it as a pinned comment a book I wrote on how to do that so anyway and that's what I'm gonna concentrate on is using this thing that way I'll tell you the uh, the negatives about this unit uh, first although this is not readily apparent that the font especially when you look at the little fonts it is anti-aliased and the closer I get you see how it looks a little fuzzy that's not the camera doing that this is in focus right now yeah if it had aliased regular fonts uh, map fonts look fine but when it gets to the small stuff yeah a little bit difficult to read this would especially be a problem um, if the unit was moving around jostling while on a bike so that uh, would be kind of an issue. Uh, the battery in this thing, if you decide to replace it, I don't think it, this would ever get more than one 90 minutes tops, maybe two hours. So that's another negative about this. Uh, another negative about it, and this is a problem with a lot of 3.5s, if I happen to go and just want to type in something, I'll just go down to cities. And I just go to spell it. You get the A, B, C, D, E keyboard. There's no QWERTY on this. On the uh, American units, North American, it's all A, B, C, D, E. You have to get used to that. And uh, this down here is a space. And that down there is for upper and lower case. If I can make it work. Yep. And you can put in numbers. And you can go to the mode. And you can change it to a different language if you want. But... Chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably from North America, so, yeah. Now, when you're using the um, open street map thing, punching in an address... Well, actually, before I get into that, here's what I recommend if you decide to get one of these and use open street map. Go over to the map section first. Now, ordinarily, most people want to set this to more. Uh, open street map is a little more detailed as far as the map is concerned. I'd set it to normal so it draws faster. So anyway, if we're going to type in an address, it's a little bit different uh, compared to if you're using Garmin map data. So if I just go to where to and do an address here, the easiest way to do this is to actually go by spell city. So in this one, I'll uh, do farmer's branch. Oops. Oh, they found it. All right. Uh, 
let's see, four, five, one, nine, L, B, J. Okay, well, I didn't get four, five, one, nine, but it got close enough. And if I go. Turn left on Precision Drive, then turn right. Yes, it does have text to speech, which is good. Let me just kill the volume on this. We'll mute that. There we go. Now, as you notice, even if I put, the, bring this back a bit, yeah, you, you can definitely see the arrow on the map, but this one up here, well, a little more difficult to see. Still very readable, but you got to think of it at like a real distance, like especially on a motorcycle or a bicycle. If this was, say, on a handlebar, and I don't know if this would be the best for you. And if you do the green bar at top and you look at the directions like this, now this is a lot more readable. And yes, it does automatically adjust as you are driving, which is good, riding, whatever you see, the top one just changed to 500 feet. When it does reach the turn, the uh, directions will automatically scroll up. I'll just wait until it does it so you can see what I'm talking about here. If using this on a motorcycle or bicycle, this is the best way to use it by far. I mean, you can use a map if you want. This is easier. See, it just scrolled up a little bit and I can always go back to the map. And as you can see, you know, it, it runs fine. So if you do want to get one of these, yeah, you can get one and it does work. The screen is bright. It's daylight readable, not a problem there, but I would, um, you're going to have to do the open street map thing most likely and just remember get that clip make sure you get that clip uh, this is also one of the few units that actually can be powered without a proprietary Garmin charger I was able to successfully power this one using just a regular USB cable 99% of Garmin uh, newbies do require the Garmin charger, but this one, if it's updated, if you use the Garmin Express software, if it's updated to the latest firmware, then yes, this one can be powered just by USB alone and it should work. So that's a general overview of this. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, leave it below. And uh, again, if you want to update the OpenStreetMap, definitely get the book.